This is John Black, super chemist. Uh, it's going to be a couple months before I open my lab up and do any experiments, so I thought I'd do a series of videos <coughs> about how to make toluene, uh, benzyl chloride, benzaldehyde, and benzyl alcohol. If you notice, they're all toluene. This one has a chlorine on it. This one has a double O on it, carbonyl. This one has a hydroxy group. But they're all toluene. <coughs> uh, this kind of reminds me of when I did the potassium dichromate videos. A lot of videos were up how to make chromate, how to make dichromate, how to make chromic acid. But basically, their starting material is one of those three things. You know what I mean? They were just, and all you do to make chromate into dichromate is add more acid. You want it to be chromic acid, add more acid. You want it to be take it from chromic acid to dichromate, you go the opposite way. You put, you know, some base in there, sodium hydroxide. And if you want it to, you know, lower the pH, <coughs> I mean, uh, higher the pH. And if you want it to go to chromate, you add even more sodium hydroxide so that it becomes basic and then you'll have uh, the chromate. My point is, is if you don't have any of those three compounds, then you, what good are these videos? You know what I mean? <coughs> Uh, and that's why I made the videos, the series of videos about chromium chemistry, how to turn chromium metal into dichromate. And I, you know, I did videos on how to get every single uh, precursor to it. And, uh, you know, uh, anyone can get chromium metal on, on, on uh, line. It's metal, you know what I mean? It's like buying silver or gold. Anyone can buy it. <laughs> So anyways, the reason why I would bring that up is because there are a million videos on how to make toluene, uh, benzyl chloride, all these four chemicals. But out of these millions of videos, they always start out with one of these four things. So if you don't have one of these four things, these videos are kind of useless. You know what I mean? Sure, if you're a, uh, you know, in a lab, you, you have all this stuff. But if you're a home chemist, you don't have this stuff. That's why you're trying to make it, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm going to go into all my methods in this video are going to be methods that start out with easy to get chemicals. See these four things here? Uh, ethyl benzoate, uh, benzene, uh, chlorobenzene, uh, phenol. Uh, those are going to be my starting materials. I'm not going to start out with the, these four here, you know what I mean? These are the ones that you want to make, you know what I mean? They're hard. They're all hard to get. These are all easy to get. And as a matter of fact, before I go into any methods on how to make um, any of these, I'm going to go in and tell you how to make these because they're so easy, you know what I mean? And the great thing about it is they all can be made from one thing. And it's an easy thing to get sodium benzoate right here. See down here at the bottom. Now this is a food preservative. If you want to can vegetables or whatever, you know, I did a video on this. Anyone can buy this stuff and pounds of it, you know what I mean? No one cares. It's for food, for God's sakes. Uh, it has an E number, so you know it's, you know, it's easy to get. Anyone can buy it. And these will be the starting materials, right, to make these because once you have one of these you, you have all of them if you have toluene that means you have all three of these if you have benzyl uh alcohol you that means you have all you have all of them if you have one you have them all just like if you have dichromate you have chromic acid and and chromate if you have chromate you have dichromate you have it all you know what i mean it's easy to change these interchange these back and forth okay and i want you to look up here here's your sodium benzoate right um that's the food preservative. Anyone can get that. Hydrochloric acid, you know, anyone can get that at the at the uh, hardware store. Mix them together, right? You know, put this in water so it dissolves, and then add some hydrochloric acid, and what happens is benzoic acid precips out. And then you can just, you know, filter it out. you got benzoic acid. What's that, 30 minutes of time? <laughs> you take your benzoic acid, you take some ethanol, a uh, little bit of sulfuric acid, Heat it up for maybe two hours, and you'll have ethyl benzoate. Okay, now that's your starting material to make one of these four chemicals, right? 
And what was the next one? The next one was benzene. How do you make benzene from sodium benzoate? Uh, you do a sodalam decarboxylation. Here it is right here, benzene. You take your benzoic acid, or you can take you can just take sodium benzoate. You don't even have to make benzoic acid. You can just buy the food preservative, add some sodium hydroxide, calcium oxide. Now you can do this with just sodium hydroxide, just calcium oxide, both of them. It doesn't matter. Heat it up real, uh, you know, extreme, and you can distill benzene out. It's that easy. You know what I mean? Take you a half hour to do that. Um, now the next one is phenol. All right, there's two methods that I'm going to show you. One is Fenton's reagent, right? That's where you take the benzene, and we just made benzene, right? I just showed you how to make benzene in 30 minutes, and you can make it directly from the food preservative. Uh, so, anyways, you get benzene, hydrogen peroxide, iron sulfate, and you'll end up with uh, phenol, right? It's that simple. Now, I don't know that reaction really. Um, I have some stuff on my notes, but uh, I've never done that one. Um, anyways, another way to make, I just wanted to show you how you can make it from sodium benzoate. You make the benzene and then you do that Fenton's reagent. But another way to make phenol is acetylene decarboxylation, right? You get some aspirin, which is acetyl salicylic acid and you uh, hydrolyze it um, so that the ester goes away and you end up with salicylic acid. And I don't know how to spell it, so I, I don't know if that's right. So you end up with salicylic acid. Again, you do a soda lime decarboxylation, just like I mentioned before. You get rid of the carboxyl group, and what are you left with? Phenol. It's that simple. The last one is chlorobenzene. That's right here. Not benzyl chloride, but chlorobenzene. You can do a electrophilic chlorination. Um, this is kind of like a Friedel Crafts acylation or uh, Friedel Crafts alkylation. Instead of using a, uh, a uh, alkyl halide, you're just using chlorine. So you end up adding chlorine instead of an alkyl group. Um, but basically, you just have your chlorine, you have your iron chloride, heat it up, and you make some chlorobenzene. Nice thing about that is chlorine is a deactivating. Uh, uh, thing that goes on there, you know what I mean? Uh, because it's so electronegative, it pulls electron density out of the benzene ring and makes it less active. You'll have chlorine added on to the other parts of the ring, but not that much because it deactivates the uh, reactivity of the ring. So that's nice about that. Another way to make uh, chlorobenzene benzene is again start with benzene. We already showed you how to make benzene. Do a nitration with uh, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, really cold, and you'll have nitrobenzene. Take your nitrobenzene, add in some hydrochloric acid and some tin. Tin reacts with the hydrochloric acid to make stannous chloride and also hydrogen, which and the hydrogen replaces the oxygens and you get aniline. I'm not sure I spelled that right. Uh, you take your aniline, you do the Sandmeyer reaction, get some sodium nitrate, hydrochloric acid, and then at step two, you do some chloride, I mean copper one chloride, and you'll end up with you replace the uh, the Amine with a uh, what is it? A azo, azo uh, compound. Uh, the azo breaks apart with the copper chloride, and the, and the chloride adds on and replaces the uh, the uh, the azo compound <coughs> with a with a halide. Um, this is a nice reaction too. Um, you definitely aren't going to get any extra uh, nitration. You know what I mean? You're only going to put one nitro group on, that's for sure. Uh, so, because this nitro group is a very deactivating uh, group. So anyways, there's how to make the uh, these four starting 
materials, right? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have, uh, I don't know, 10, 10 reactions. I'm going to go over maybe 15. I mean, I have 100 of them, but I can't go over all of them. These are the easy ones or the ones I think are easy. Um, and what I'm going to do is each video, I'll go over a new reaction. Like the next video will be called hydrogenation, hydrogenation of a uh, ester. Okay, and I will go into this reaction right here about how you get the ethyl benzoate that we made, get some hydrogen. I mean, they sell hydrogen at the welding store. You know, anyone can buy it. It's not like you you know you need a license or something. Uh, copper chromite. I have you know there's different kinds of uh, catalyst. This is just an example. Doug's video does a video on how to make it. It's pretty easy. Um, and you just put it into your container. Uh, now, I don't know how much pressure this needs, you know what I mean? But like I said, I'll, I'll go into it more in depth uh, when I do the video on hydrogenation of an ester. Um, just to give you another example, the Bouvier blank reduction. Again, starting with... Uh, an ester, ethyl benzoate, uh, sodium, ethanol, uh, mix them together, you know what I mean, drip in your alcohol, and you end up with benzoyl alcohol and ethanol. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a couple, couple examples there. Like I said, each video I'll go more in depth about what I know, if I've done it, if I haven't done it. Um, <clears throat> But I can guarantee you this, I will not use any of these as my starting material to make one of these. Because you can't get these. That's the whole point. All my starting materials will be one of these four things. And I just showed you how you can make every one of these four things with sodium benzoate. A food preservative. For God's sakes, it's put in food. It's like saying you can't buy hot dogs. You can buy as many hot dogs as you want. Just like you can buy as much sodium benzoate as you want. And the phenol, you can also make that from uh, aspirin. Anyone can buy aspirin. You know what I mean? Come on. Now, I did do this reaction. I'm going to show a bunch of reactions where you can try this type of thing. What I did was I got xylene and uh, some dilute nitric acid, and I refluxed it until it became toluic acid. The whole thing here is, see how this is really, if I take this off, see how that's toluene, right? And the sodium decarboxylation is what gets rid of these carboxy groups, right? Off a of benzene ring, and we already went over that three times about a sodium decarboxylation. It's basically what I did with the toluic acid. And if this was sodium benzoate or benzoic acid, see, like that, you would make benzene. But since you got that added on, you got it added on over here, and you end up with toluene. So this is just another method of, you know, let's say it was toluene with an OH on it. You know, then you distill it from zinc dust. You get rid of the OH, and you end up with toluene. I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff, how to get stuff off of rings and leave what you want so that you end up with toluene or benzoyl alcohol or whatever. I'll name them all, but here's a couple more. Uh, Friedel Crafts acylation, starting materials benzene, methyl chloride, uh, aluminum chloride, or you can heat it up and uh, you'll get uh, toluene. Another one, blank uh, chloromethylization, and that again you're using benzene, uh, this time you're using formaldehyde, uh, stannous chloride, and HCl. And you end up with uh, benzyl chloride. Uh, you also got the copper lithium reaction. <clears throat> uh, these next few ones are with uh, you're starting with chlorobenzene. Uh, the Riemann Timon reaction. Uh, this time you're starting out with phenol. Somehow it makes a, uh, a chlorobenyl here. <clears throat> you might say, well, that's nothing. That has an OH group on there. But if you have an OH group on a benzene ring and you want to remove it, you just distill it from zinc dust. You all have a great day, and always remember, science is great.